Hey guys, Eric Vallon here. I'm a lifestyle portrait photographer based out of New York City. What we're gonna cover today is some sun mover basics. So when I'm out on location, I shoot outdoors all over the country and I need a couple tools that are super handy, super versatile, easy to travel with. And one of my favorite things is the silver and white reflector. I can't always bring a ton of equipment with me. So I rely on a few reflectors that are extremely versatile and easy to pack. So what I really love is the sun mover. It's a reflector that's made by sun bounce and you can see it packages really small. And when I pop this guy up, it's gonna be a 32 inch reflector. There's a lot of options as far as reflective fabrics too, and I personally like the silver and white. It gives me the most versatility in a single package. What each of these sides do is rather unique. This white side right here is very soft, neutral fill. It's not going to change the color. What it's going to do is just build light into our subject's face. And you don't have to be very specific with it either. It's not very directional. You get closer, it fills in more light. Farther away, it fills in less. The silver side is our high output side. This is gonna bounce a lot of light into our subject's face. So this you have to be careful with, but this is great because it can really act as a key light, which will be the brightest light source in your photograph. It also allows you to get farther away from your subject and still light them efficiently. So I can have my assistant or a helper stand outside of the frame so they're not in my shot, and they can still bounce plenty of light into my subject's face so they look beautiful and I can compose a full body composition if I want. Okay, so now you see what the silver and the white side of the reflectors can do. But you might say there's all kinds of reflectors out there, different manufacturers that have silver and white. What's the big deal? Well, I want to show you why I particularly like the sun mover over some of the competition. So the first unique feature in my absolute favors has got to be these handles. You've noticed throughout this shoot, my assistant's been able to really easily hold this thing, get it in position, place it, two hands, one hand. I mean, this is, seems like a no-brainer, but this is one of the only reflectors out there in the market that has these great handles. You can also easily mount it to a light stand. So you might be thinking, I don't always have an assistant or someone to help. Well, check this out. Really easily, you can just take a standard light stand and a clamp and put this position underneath as a fill or maybe even overhead as a key light. So you don't even need an assistant with handles like this. So the next thing you'll notice when you pick one of these up is you can grab it by this convenient handle and then it also is extremely firm. There's a huge steel band in here that's gonna keep it in place and keep it taut like the cover of a drum. What that's gonna do is you can pull this up in the wind and where most reflectors would crumple up like a potato chip in the breeze, this one's gonna remain firm and give you a consistent light output when you're reflecting downrange. And the last thing I really love about this is when you combine all these great features together, so using both of the handles and this super taut surface, this is one of the only reflectors on the market that you can actually focus and diffuse. So most of the reflectors have a neutral position and that's all you think that you can get out of this. But with something like this, I can then bend it and I'll show you how you can spread the light out to create more volume or you can focus it in like a spotlight so it has a spot effect, a spread, and a neutral position. No other reflector out there is that versatile. So here's your neutral position. This is your standard reflector. If I want to soften that light or get more coverage, I can flex it out and I have a spread effect. Look at that light grow for even coverage of a group or a full body shot or a wider angle. This also softens the light and spreads it out too so it's not so harsh on your subject's face. Here's back to neutral and here's our spotlight focus so we have all that intensity. Where this really comes in handy is when you have to get farther away from your subject, I'm able to take this light and focus it so I still have all that intensity even as I get really far away and out of the frame. So when you're shooting out on location like this and you're blessed with a beautiful day, you come into some problems with how contrasty the direct sunlight can be. So the first thing I recommend doing is finding that sun. If you look at the shot where she's half in sun, half in shadow, it's very contrasty, it's not very flattering. I want you to turn your subjects back to the sun. That's gonna solve that problem of contrasty light and give you a blank canvas to work with. You'll notice that the face is a little bit flat though, so we wanna add that light. Here's where our sun mover comes in. I wanna start with the white side first because on a bright sunny day like this, you don't need a lot of light to make a lot of impact. So if you bring the white in close, it's very omnidirectional. You don't have to focus it too much and it brings a soft, natural fill light to the scene. You can have this placed a little bit low or high. It doesn't matter. What it's gonna do is add a little sparkle to the eyes, raise that shadow and give you some direction and contrast to the face, but in a good way. The other option is the silver. This is gonna act as a key light. Remember, this is our very high output, high intensity, very bright. This is gonna be the brightest light in the scene. And when you're working with a key light, you want it to be over your subject's eye level. You want to have it above their head. Think about daylight, sunlight, overhead lamps. The light's all coming down, so you want to mimic that when you're reflecting your light back in. So you'll notice that our assistant here has the reflector really up high, aiming down, getting that bright, beautiful light in there. Now we have a beautiful, controlled contrast and direction to the light. 
versus that beautiful soft fill that we had. So both of these are beautiful photos, great options, and you can create both of them quick and easily with a single sun mover. So the silver white configuration is definitely my favorite. It's by far the most versatile, but if you start looking at the rest of the sun mover lineup, they have different fabrics and different reflective material you can choose from. You also have the zigzag options. These are basically taking your silver high output material and weaving in some of the white so you have that nice soft diffuse push of fill light as well. The other zigzag is going to be that white material for the softness of the fill with some gold weaved into it. That way you get that nice warmth in your fill light, but it's not as high output as that zebra with the silver and the gold. So you can see how you can really start fine tuning your light, whether you're using it as a key light or a fill light and adding an element of warmth to it or cutting down the intensity a little bit as you get into some of these more specific patterns and fabric combinations. So now you can see why the Sun Mover is my go-to reflector when I'm shooting on location all over the world. Extremely portable, easy to pack, take with me on the go, and very versatile when I'm out there on location.